In this video, I'll be showing how to connect a mixing console to a power amplifier. Now, audio mixers are generally connected to loudspeakers through power amplifiers. And for active loudspeakers, the power amplifier is built into the speaker cabinet. And so the mixing console is just connected to the speaker where the audio signal is both amplified and converted to sound. In passive loudspeakers, however, the power amplifier is a separate standalone device, just as you can see here. The mixer is connected to the amplifier, which is then connected to the loudspeaker. That's the method we'll focus on in today's video. Usually and often in large PA system, there will be a graphic or parametric equalizer or a signal processor in the signal chain between the mixer and the amplifier. Now that's outside the scope of today's video, however, I will cover all of that in a separate video. That being said, let's jump right into today's video. You can connect any of the output buses on the mixing console to the input of the power amplifier using the appropriate cables to match the connectors on the console's outputs and the amplifier's inputs. If you are not sure of which outputs to use for which purpose, then you should check out my video on how to use the different outputs on the mixing console. I've linked it in the description. This power amplifier has an XLR input connector. The mixer on the other hand has XLR connectors for its main outputs and quarter range TRS connectors for its auxiliary and group outputs. To connect the main output to the power amplifier, I'll simply use an XLR or a microphone cable. To connect the auxiliary or group out, on the other hand, I'll use a TRS to male XLR adapter cable, like this one. In order to make an effective connection between the mixer, the power amplifier, and the loudspeaker, a good understanding of power amplifier operating modes is required. Multiple channel power amplifiers, like the one we're using in this video, often have three modes in which they operate, stereo, parallel, and bridge mode. Now, these modes define the relationship between the amplifier's inputs and outputs. Let's start with the first mode, stereo. Now, I'd like to refer to this mode as independent mode. This is because it basically treats the amplifier channels as two completely separate and independent channels. Input to channel 1 goes to the output of channel 1 with its own separate level control and processing. The same thing is applicable to channel 2. Channel 2's input goes to channel 2's output with its own level control and processing. You can use channel 1 for your left main output while channel 2 is used for your right main output. Alternatively, you can use channel 1 for your front of house speakers and channel 2 used for monitors. These are just two examples, uh, but in a nutshell, you have two separate amplifier channels for you to use however you like. The second mode of operation is parallel mode. Let's keep this power amplifier in stereo mode for a moment. Suppose you want to send the exact same signal to both amplifier channels. How do you go about it? You probably send the signal to the input of channel 1 and then use another cable to link the signal from channel 1 to channel 2. This is exactly what the parallel mode does, except that the link is done internally. In parallel mode, the input of channel 1 goes to the output of both channels 1 and 2, while the input of channel 2 is disconnected. However, both channels still have separate level controls and processing. Parallel mode is often used when you need to send one audio signal to multiple speakers. For example, a bunch of stage monitors across the front of a very large stage. The third mode of operation is bridge mode. Now, in this mode, the power amplifier combines the output of both channels to drive a much larger load than either channel can handle on its own. The input of channel 1 is connected to the signal source, while the input of channel 2 is not connected. The output is connected from the positive terminals of both channels or as specified in the amplifier's owner's manual. This mode requires special cabling, especially if you're using the speaker connector. I won't be able to get into all of that now, but I have a separate video coming up where I've explained everything about that. I will link it in the description as soon as I upload it. Now, if you're getting any form of value from this video, I will appreciate that you subscribe and leave a thumbs up to the video. Now I have a follow-up video to this one where I've explained how to connect the power amplifier to a passive loudspeaker. Click here to watch that video. I'm Kelvin. Thank you for seeing this video. I'll see you in the next one.